Hello, hello, hello. I am making a video. And it is a beautiful day today. And I did my foot and leg bath outside in the wheelbarrow. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Wonderful to have that. It's like having a pond. It's really nice. And the water is warm from the sun. It's really, really wonderful. And the baby dog is out there. He is up at the neighbors. Turning it, turning it, turning it, turning it, turning it. And he is always there looking for the kitty cats of the neighbor. And... Paul is hanging up the laundry and I'm not allowed to have the camera on him. So it's always nice to be here, you know, it's very relaxing. Particularly in the summertime, it's really, really nice. So I want to talk about the two autos in this video. One of them was my friend Otto from Germany, an artist, and he would have become a famous artist. I'm sure of that. But Otto is no longer here in his lifetime, in his existence. And the other Otto is no longer here either. And that Otto is from the United States. And that Otto went to Pyongyang, I think is Pyeng or something like Pyongyang, capital city of North Korea. And that was a big mistake. Big mistake. The biggest mistake one can possibly make to ever go to North Korea during these times. And so I'm going to start with that auto because that auto suffered way, way more probably than anyone else has ever suffered. than any human probably has ever suffered, but I don't know. But definitely one of the absolute worst torture cases in the world. Okay, And I don't know if he took a flag from that hotel or if they planted a flag in a suitcase, they could have just to have an excuse to get mad at him and incarcerate him and torture him for a year. He really wanted to see his family again. He, he held on with every power he had. He held on to life. Just I mean, barely held on to life. And that case was absolutely, that was the worst thing I have ever heard. Okay, and I cried and I was absolutely shaken by that case. But what the animals are going through, I have to intercept this right here at this moment. What the animals are going through in animal exploitation commerce facilities, such as slaughterhouses and, and even worse, bare gallbladder 
facilities. That is the absolute worst that I have ever heard. And I will talk about this as well. The absolute worst. What the pigs are going through in gestation crates for years. For many years. That's the absolute worst there is. That and the, and the gallbladder facilities where the bears are hooked onto catheters catheters that are going into their into their gallbladder to collect gallbladder fluid and they're not they, they can't even walk they can't even move around that are permanently hooked onto this it's so bad that I better I better tell that story now I've talked about this before in my videos it's so bad that there was a mother bear with her baby. She knew that this was going to be the fate of her baby as well. Bears are very intelligent. Don't underestimate them. And she was hooked up to that catheter. And she knew her baby was going to be hooked up as well later on. When he grows older. So she decided this was not worth living for neither one of them. She cut the uh, water of her baby and bled him to death and then she cut her own wrists and bled her to death. That's the worst thing. That is much worse. I believe this is much worse than what any human has even suffered. Or at least the same, you know. So, I don't know what they did to that auto, but I cried and I was absolutely shaken because I can just imagine the hatred that Kim Jong-un and his, his executioners have for people from the United States. And when they get a hold of someone from the United States, and that was during the Obama administration, Obama did nothing for Otto, absolutely nothing. If Otto had been black, Obama would have done something. But Otto was white, so Obama did nothing to bring him back. Nothing. Okay. They were even people that offered to help, but they needed to be backed up by the U.S. military. Barack Obama said no to them. He said he he stopped them. He said, "Don't help him." Now that's that's an atrocity from the side of Barack Obama. Okay, and it certainly is the absolute atrocity from Kim Jong-un and his executioners, his torturers, the torture executioners that he has that work for him. And he's already done, done horrific things to also, to anyone in North Korea who would be standing against his regime and against his terror dictatorship he would torture them and then he would publicize that to make sure that nobody ever says a word against his regime people in North Korea are absolutely terrified they live in terror okay this should not be tolerated by the rest of the world okay this should never be tolerated this should never be tolerated by China. And the reason why it's tolerated by China, by the Chinese officials, is because they are, they're sending, I, I don't know, they, they don't even send anyone, they don't even have to send anyone there. They get very cheap merchandise coming from North Korea, from the North Korean prison camps. And it's torture what's happened there. 
what's happening there. There was a guy, he escaped. I talked about this before. There was a guy, they breed people there. And there was a guy who was, I don't know, third, fourth generation growing up in that prison camp. Never has, never seen the world outside. And he had someone, some kind of friend who felt sorry for him in there. And that friend was really tired of being there. And the friend said, it's nicer outside of that prison camp and and outside of North Korea. It's nice in South Korea. They sell all kinds of amazing foods there and people are free and he told him about it. So he said, I'm willing to give my life for you to get the hell out of here. And at night they, the two went on a long hike through that prison camp territory and they got to a place where there was no guard and they couldn't see them but it, the whole place was fenced off with extreme high powered electric fence and nobody would get through that alive if you even touch that lightly you get fried so his friend said I'm gonna throw myself over the lower bar of that high-powered electric fence and you have to slide as quickly as possible over my body and that's what they did his friend gave his life and the other guy managed to get over his body without getting too much of an injury and then he just ran and ran and ran and ran I don't know for hours just running and they could not get him so I guess the authorities found out there was the uh, there they had an alarm but they were too late he already escaped out of their range of their out of their shooting range and he got out and he ran he ran he ran through still some parts of I guess of North Korea but they couldn't get him he got into South Korea and as soon as he got into South Korea I guess he must have collapsed and the people there helped him and rescued him and then he was able to tell his story he went all around the world I think he lives in the United States now. He told everyone how horrific it is in North Korea and how horrific a dictatorship is. And just warning people, you know, about dictatorships. Don't ever accept a dictatorship where people are being tortured where people have to live in terror okay and so both of these men who made it out one dead one alive those are heroes those are amazing people that did not tolerate this that did not accept that and neither would I. I would not accept that. I would commit suicide too. And if I could help someone to get out, I would do the same thing. Because that's not a life worth living. Okay. So, and there's another Otto. My friend Otto. Otto Hellberg from Germany. And he was murdered. I don't know who murdered him. A man or a woman. I suspected his ex-girlfriend. But maybe I was wrong. But maybe it was her. Because she acted weird. But I don't know if it was her. I don't know for sure. 
but we told the police all everything about this woman and my friend Viola and I went over there and investigated this and it was kind of scary to investigate this Viola had a lot of courage to go in there into that apartment I was too afraid I stayed downstairs so but we didn't get very far with our investigation Otto was stabbed like 80 times in the back he was an artist modern artist he made a drawing of me once when I was 19 and he was 30 and I was dating him but we were in, a, in an open relationship Otto was not able to get into a close relationship and that's perfectly okay and I respected that he didn't like to be boxed up by anyone and I don't blame him but I think it was either a jealous husband who stabbed him or it was his ex-girlfriend who stabbed him because and either either way it was that's most likely was because of jealousy because he was not committed to anyone and he, he was dating different women and I didn't have a problem with that at all I was dating different men I loved him, I, I really liked him. It was nice hanging out with him. One time I got a little bit attached and I hung out with him for like three days and he said he needs to be alone now and I respected that but he was always nice to me and it was good hanging out with him and, and he liked me too and he wanted to encourage me about going to the art school but I didn't feel encouraged because the professor there told me that my art was not acceptable or something like that but I think that had more to do with my parents with the professor art professor knowing my parents and having some kind of bad feelings about them or something emotional was going on there so and they let it out on me but I got discouraged from that I thought oh I'm not good enough of an artist but Otto tried to encourage me and and tell me I needed to do much more instead of just my own style I, I needed to do much more of drawings of realistic drawings of different things nature and, and people and more realistic drawings basically s s the so called still drawings and and I didn't listen to him I just thought that was wrong that they sent me away 
and I and I thought, oh, I don't need that art school anyway. Why should I go to an art school? You know, I'm already doing drawings and different things, but I always like to add my own my own view into it. I always distorted the shapes deliberately because I like that better. But then later on, I also wanted to train my skill in still drawings and I did more of that on my own and I'm very good at that also at drawing dogs and human faces so I'm very good at that but I always like to add a little bit at least I, that that happens automatically I'll always add a little bit of that extra what I that what I see in that face what I particularly like I will make that more pronounced in my drawings and and that's nice so and then in my modern art I completely distort the shapes and I make it bigger and and prolonged and so on and Otto did a lot of still drawings but also the things he liked and he particularly liked eggs and round shapes, so he was very crazy about this, always draw, drawing eggs and was in a specific surrounding with a specific light shining onto it. And his drawings were very, very good. He could have become a real amazing artist. He would have probably been among the top hundred modern artists today if he had not been murdered. So I wanted to talk about these two people. I thought about them the other day and I meant to make a video about them because they deserve to have a, a video made about them and someone talking about them with love and respect and kindness and compassion and empathy. I think that's important. I think it is important that we talk about these things it is important to talk about also negative things but not talk about the negative things from the perspective of like horror excitement spectacle or something like this you know some kind of hyper excitement like horror story There's a guy who constantly tells horror stories. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. I think it's it helps people, it teaches people to to pay more attention, you know, to be more careful with what they do, with who they hang out with, you know, the signs of psychopathy to pay attention to, you know, I think it's very important. But I don't know why he does it, but he's probably telling this because that is raises the adrenaline. It, it's interesting. So, and yeah, it is definitely interesting from the perspective of forensic analysis and forensic psychology definitely interesting and there's a fine line and there's no line at all it, it can go over into you know morbid excitement and stuff like this there are people that are very very excited about those kind of stories 
so or there are there are people that go over to murder scenes and they will be standing around that red tape and, and watch that for hours what's going on and and get a get a glimpse of a corpse and they think that's exciting or rush over to an accident where someone had been badly injured and Paul does Paul has the tendency to do this if there's an accident he will rush over and and he will be looking at it and, and I think that's a morbid interest like some kind of excitement into this I feel kind of I find it disturbing I find that scary so I would rather not see someone who is badly injured or badly mutilated corpse or something but I I can understand that this is this has this has a a thrill effect it does it I think everyone ha everyone agrees on that that it does have something some kind of thrill effect that it takes you out of your daily worries and just for a moment you see oh someone went through something horrible and something extreme yeah, some extreme situation it takes us out of our daily suffering the the basso continuo of dull suffering and it raises our adrenaline and it raises the it it lets the the pituitary gland shed out endorphins in order to and I talked about this before in order to balance out the corpus callosum in the brain which is the scale of the brain near the brain stem it's, it's a scale that balances out adrenaline and and fear and and pain and all of these things with different endorphins in order to f feel normal in order to feel good again or to be able to function normally so it sheds out endorphins and and analgesic substances into the body even DMT so and people can get addicted to DMT because I I've experienced this a few times when I saw something horrible the DMT level got boosted naturally in my in my system the, the pituitary gland was signaling to shed out DMT or signaling to the pineal gland to to shed out DMT I think the pineal gland has to do with the DMT and some people will get addicted to this and so some people will get addicted to seeing extreme situations and if they don't pay any attention, if they don't practice, if they don't, if they don't have that much empathy, ability in the brain, then the empathy, then if there's no empathy, then there's nothing that stops them from, from seeking out more and more and more extreme situations, and then they will eventually leap over and get into hurting people just for the thrill of that just to see someone being badly mutilated there are people like this that will throw people in front of a train just so that they can see this mutilated body and the bloods plattering all over the place and so then they they get this DMT rush again and the other endorphins as well so that can become an addiction and that is definitely a very large part of the causes of 
sadistic behavior and sadistic thinking. The other part of sadistic behavior is for people, they want to feel like they have power over other people. So it's both of these components. And when both of these components come together, then that's um, that's what makes up a super predator. Okay. And they come in all colors. Okay. So there's just a difference in statistics. That's all. And you do your own math. You do. You look into the statistics. I'm not going to lay that out for anyone. You look into it. No? That's all I can say. You look at it. And if you don't like the outcome of their statistical evaluation, then you are not looking, you're not willing to look at facts. You're in denial. Okay. But there, there are very strong, severe differences in the demographics in terms of violent crimes. Okay. This has to be said. It's important. I have trouble breathing, particularly when I talk about those kind of things. But I think it's very important to talk about these things because people need to know. And we need to know everything we can find out about the human species and about ourselves, of course. Yeah. We need to know how we protect ourselves, how we protect others. We need to also learn how to help others and how to help someone who is a super predator. How do we help someone like this? We certainly don't help someone like this through shaming that person. We never help someone like this through violence, like a person like that is in prison and, and the prison guard then beats that person or humiliates that person on a daily basis. That doesn't help that super predator. That just makes the prison guard become a violent person. Okay, so that doesn't make the world a better place. Going to war is basically the same thing, you know. Many people against many people. That doesn't help make the world a better place at all. When someone uses humiliation tactics. That doesn't make the world a better place. A lot of people don't know that. Some people actually mean well, you know, like Sea Shepherd, for example. They meant well, you know, was they meant well when they when they went against the Japanese whale hunters and they did an enormously great job. The only problem that I had was that the only problem I ever had with, with how they went about it is what they have painted and written onto their ship. Everything else was perfectly okay. okay. If nobody else is policing the Arctic, the Antarctic whale sanctuary, and they are the only ones policing that, then they have the right to do it. Okay. The only problem I had was that the the I guess uh, even the skull and bones is okay, you know, pirate ship even. That's all okay. The only problem I had was that is that they had that they wrote down on that they wrote something like what the US military had on their ships when they against the Japanese. So that is unacceptable. That's an unacceptable to use these kind of memories from World War Two or you know, when they went against the Japanese and these kind of writings or statements or whatever they had, like certain statements they had against them and and then Sea Shepherd would use the same thing in order to I guess to scare them or to humiliate them 
that doesn't work that is it didn't scare them it it humiliated them and it threw fuel into the fire and when they do that then obviously then their egos the the, the japanese well hunters egos and the, the entire japanese nation and japanese legislation they will take offense to this and they will send out more whale hunters it just it doesn't end the whale hunting so and it didn't i don't i i don't i don't know if i blame that now on it but they probably would have done more whale hunting either way but to humi to use humiliation tactics is definitely not going to create peace or help with any kind of peace negotiations. It doesn't help make the world a better place. The way we make the world a better place is if we if we communicate first of all with the with the the other person with the front with the war front with the opposition with the super predators with violent people whatever if we communicate first of all in a very serious way very serious you cannot mock anybody and you can't mock anyone ever no matter how bad you feel no matter what you're feeling you have to communicate in a very serious and very straightforward and very honest way that's the only way we can ever communicate with anyone okay that's very very important It it seems difficult for a lot of people, you know. I even caught myself sometimes in doing some, saying some something sarcastic, something sideways, you know. So, and that doesn't work at all. That comes that's passive aggressiveness that comes out of frustration, of course. That is not straightforward communication, yeah. And it's very important that we even start with our family members i have to be straightforward in the way i communicate with my family member my parents didn't do that with me they were snarly and so on and and so we had to i had to really do inwardness and see and through meditation understand that they were wrong you know even if the entire society is on my parents side or if the entire human society worldwide is doing these things or endorsing these things or like thinking there's nothing wrong with that or having the wrong legal systems and the wrong ethics i have to do the inwardness process and i have to go against all of this and i have to say i see this is not working so i'm going to do it differently and i live by example and i teach other people that we have to communicate with each other in a very straightforward and a very serious way and then if that doesn't work and if the opposition is snapped into some kind of troll resistance troll mode resistance you know which a lot of people are and some of them are dangerous so if they you know if they're not dangerous you know we can still communicate straightforward and if they don't learn from this we have to let go we have to give them space okay but if they come at us if they're violent we have to 
defend ourselves. And we have to use force to defend ourselves. We have to use physical force to defend ourselves and our loved ones. This is very important. A lot of people don't know that. I grew up also, my parents still had the Lutheran mind state going, even though they considered themselves free from the church and atheist agnostic, but they have not questioned it. They they just went by, oh, this is all this is old fashioned, this is outdated, I'm I prefer modern art, I'm going with the whatever we want to be snobs or something like this. That That's their new religion. But the Lutheran mindset had still not been resolved or questioned or worked through. They just built something else on top of it. So we grew up, still grew up, with this mind state, this Lutheran type of mind state of hold the other cheek and you should never even question anyone. You should never even never question authority or never this whole thing was this energetic vibration was still very strongly there although it wasn't really there wasn't some kind of there wasn't some kind of ex exclamation or imperative that that they would be talking about but it was there sort of underhandedly. It was always there in the room. It was taught to us in some kind of roundabout way and the way they acted. And they snubbed people who would stand up against anyone. My mother would say, oh, that's a, that's, they're opinionated or they're extreme or they're I don't know what kind of word she had there they're extremist activists or they're feminists or whatever she hated all of that so that and that was drilled into her, and she never questioned this that that Lutheran mind state hated everyone who was strongly standing up for themselves and empowering themselves. They didn't want people to to be empowered. They didn't want the the Vatican at that time, you know, around fifteen hundred. They didn't want the Vatican popes and that there were two popes in a row both brothers that come that come from the Medici family and they were all open and open-minded and progressive and modern and they 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 were living together with Galileo and and they were pro-science and pro-music and pro-art and Martin Luther in the monk the German monk from northern Germany he didn't like that at all that they had this paradise that they were creating that that went against his ego that they had such a good life out there in Italy and he he sicked people against them he sicked his middlemen against them to have the Medici brothers murdered and the Medici family murdered and everyone who was on their side murdered and, and they called that a revolution. So that's not a revolution, that is a regression. That's a regression into dictatorship and into fear, into terror. So what we're experiencing right now with Black Lives Matter and Antifa and the Muslim agenda pushing, that is not a revolution. That's the same as Martin Luther and maybe worse. Okay, so It is a dictatorship that is rolling up and that's why I tell people pay attention to this. 
pay attention very closely. The animal angels, angels agree with me. So, the blue god agrees with me on this. Pay close attention and stand up for yourself, you know. Stand up for yourself. Empower yourself. All of us. Every one of us. Empower yourself. Not by hating someone. You empower yourself by saying no to violent people. Say no to violence. Say no to a violent dictatorship. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they're just puppets. The corporate agenda runs this country. Say no to their violent oppression, to their violent dictatorship. The corporate agenda was their with their with their executioners with their masterminds and 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 master managers and CEOs and micromanagers and all of these puppeteers they're all behind the scenes in the White House they don't want you to see them they're the ones who are telling Kamala Harris and Joe Biden what to say publicly. They are completely in control of everything. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are criminals, but they're not. They are not masterminds. They're not micromanagers. They're not the ones orchestrating anything. They're being used... They are just small criminals that are being used to play a facade. So the people behind the scenes are running the United States now. And it's very scary what's happening. Very, very, very frightening. You can clearly see we don't have freedom of speech anymore. We don't have freedom anymore. This, is, this country was based on freedom. Okay. This, this is the number one priority of Jefferson and all of these these founding fathers. The number one priority is freedom of speech, freedom from religion, freedom freedom from oppression, freedom from England. Okay. But the corporate dictatorship doesn't want any of that. They're going against it. And we need to pay very close at attention and not allow this. This is real serious, what I'm saying. Okay, so peace and love for all living beings. <laughs>